Hey guys, what's up? Uh, my last video with the NMD R1s and the R2s got a pretty decent response, so I decided to make another one. Uh, today I'm going to compare the Yeezy Boost 350 V1s versus the Yeezy Boost 350 V2s. Um, I have the Pirate Black 2016 V1s right here. I have the black and white V2s right here. Uh, probably the two most similar Yeezys from V1 and V2. Um, so let's get right into it. Start with uh, the uppers on the V1. The V1 upper is, it's pretty simple actually. It's, um, it's literally just two panels of prime knit sewn together down the middle, down the bottom, and all the way up to the heel. Think of it as a bag of prime knit sewn together in the middle sitting on a bed of boost. I mean, that's literally what it is. There's really nothing to it. If I take the sock liner out, you guys can see that the bottom of the shoe is just the prime knit sewn together. Um, there's not much to it. The only thing that they really added to the upper is this kind of like padded heel tab. The original release of the Pirate Blacks, the 2015 release, did not have this. Uh, the 2016 release has it, so I guess this is kind of like the, uh, the 350 V1.5, but it definitely helps with the comfort and helps from your foot slipping out, the little cushioning right there. So I'm a big fan of it. On the inside here, there's a little bit of a, a leather inlay that prevents the, the laces from ripping through the prime knit. So that's also a nice touch, kind of adds a little bit more durability. Heel tab on the back here. I, I, I personally never use the heel tab. Uh, I'm afraid I'm, it's gonna rip off, I'm kind of paranoid. But yeah, overall, pretty sick prime knit pattern going through the entire shoe there. I think that is so cool. Uh, that's probably my favorite thing about this shoe is this kind of like glitchy prime knit pattern. The Yeezy 350 signature. Uh, let's move on to the the V2s. Bam, the V2s. So obviously the biggest thing um, that's different about the V2s is that they, they got rid of that prime knit pattern and they, they put in this stripe. To be totally honest, when they first announced this, well, when I saw the leaks last year, I wasn't a huge fan. Uh, then the Beluga colorway came out, and then the three colors came out, and I guess, uh, you know, I, I kind of they, they kind of grew on me. I still like the, the the glitch pattern on the V1 more, but this is pretty cool, I guess. Uh, Supply 350. One big thing that a lot of people will say is that the V2s have a stiffer prime knit. That's actually not true. Um, if I compare the prime knit side by side here, I'm running my fingers in the prime knit. Uh, they feel pretty much the same. They have the same amount of give. V2s actually have this kind of like inner web system of plastic inlay panels that you can't see from the outside, but they're all on the inside. I'm gonna uh, put a picture on uh, comparing the inside of the V1s and the V2s so you guys can see. As you can see from the picture, there's like this pretty intricate web pattern of plastic inlay panels right here on the toe box. Gives a lot of structure. If I press down on the toe box here, it kind of like springs right back into shape versus the V1s, you know, it just kind of like it's, a, it's like a sack, literally. The, the plastic inlays um, give a shoe a lot of structure, which in turn translates to being a overall more comfortable shoe and a shoe that grips your foot better, so a more stable shoe. Also, one thing I wanted to address was this, the heel right here on the V2. The V2 has a curved heel. I'm assuming they're taking some hints from their ever popular Ultra Boost silhouette that kind of has the same thing. They're accentuating the, the natural curves of the human heel and ankle, which I think is sick tongue or I guess the faux tongue comes up a lot higher kind of resulting in a more aggressive silhouette overall and I think and it kind of works. The, there's also this slight 3M type material doing the the three lines 
right on the inside of the heel there. That's pretty sick. You never really see it when you're wearing it, but uh, it's, I think it's a nice touch. The stealth Adidas branding. I'm, I'm a big fan. So let's move on to the, um, the outsoles. There's really not much to the Yeezy Boost 350 outsole on the V1. It's just this outer cage of this kind of like shiny, rubbery material. And there's some more tacky rubber on the high abrasion areas like the midfoot and the heel. And of course the, the core boost in there. I mean, there's not much to it. It's comfortable, it's boost, you're standing on it. It's a simple shoe. The V2's slightly more sophisticated. First of all, it's not made out of that um, shiny rubber anymore. It's uh, this more tacky translucent rubber. They're using the same material all throughout the, the outsole, unlike the V1's. It's made out of three panels. There's a panel on the right, a panel on the left, and a panel on the bottom. And all three panels are joined at the heel right there. You can see the seams. They kind of emulated the, the, the same cutouts from the V1, but the big differentiator here is this right here the arch support now this is huge this like literally makes a shoe for me um my biggest gripe about the v1 was that i mean like i said it's like it's like wearing a a sack on top of a bed of boost there's no support here whatsoever so what happened to me was like when i would wear the shoe um my foot would bag out and the the arch of my foot had no support so it would just kind of like squish down squish down onto the the outsole here and if you can i don't know if you can see that but you can even see the imprint of the outsole on this leather tab because you know when i was wearing it it was just like squishing down on the outsole and it's not very comfortable because you can literally feel the outsole kind of like digging into your arch they i guess they they, they had a lot of complaints about that and they addressed it by having this outsole come up you can see how much higher the outsole comes up on the V2s um, by having the outsole kind of like come up and flare like that it acts as like this structural column so the arch of your foot has some support and it doesn't collapse down onto the outsole it's it's actually really smart and it works it it definitely works this shoe is way more comfortable like I dare say like by a factor of two so what shoe is better well, that's a hard question. Um, the V1s have the the cool glitch pattern. I mean, you can't, how can you beat that pattern? That's such a sick pattern. But the V2s just have so much more functionality and tech. So, it's a toss up between looking cool and actually being a practical shoe to wear. So I guess they're two different shoes for two different types of situations. So if I were to go to like an amusement park or something like that and I knew I'd be walking around a lot, and I want to like flex on some people, like for sure, V2s. If I'm going to some sort of function where I'm probably not gonna be walking as much, um, still wanna flex, V1s. I mean, for me personally, I guess I have both so I don't have to choose one. But I, like I said, it's situational. Now if they made a kind of like a V2 with the bleach pattern of a V1, that would be super sick. Um, you should get on that Adidas. All right, so I'm gonna roll some on foot footage and that's it, thanks for watching. See you guys later.